Good evening and hello and welcome to Arab TV. This is Vic Zakur, your host. Today, or this evening when you watch this, we're going to have a program which is basically taking us back to the history of Iraq thousands of years ago when certain musical instruments were created. And also you'll hear some kind of uh, very classical Iraqi singing and we'll talk about it with an award-winning, hey, believe it or not, a trumpet player. Trumpet player, he's an Iraqi-American, and he went to Iraq and learned this classical Iraqi music and singing. Now, when you hear this, when you hear this, I and mean, when you see this program, probably there was an event you've seen, most of you have seen advertisements about it. The event probably passed. Uh, Amir would have played for about 500 Iraqis and Americans in Fremont and we did a wonderful show and for those who, who missed the show we're doing this program so I'd like to introduce Amir Asafar. Amir? Pleasure to be here. Thank, thank you for coming. You. Thank you so much. And uh, where did you come from? Chicago or New York or? Where, well I, I was born in Chicago uh -huh. um, just outside of Chicago and I uh, lived there until my early 20s and then I moved to New York um, when I was about 21, 22, and I stayed there a couple of years, and then um, I spent a few years traveling overseas, which I'm sure we'll get to later, mm -hmm. um, and then basically returned to New York, and I, that's where I'm based yeah. right so, now. So now you're in, fr in New York. Based in New York. And you're traveling all over the United States with your uh, musical shows? Yeah. Um, we performed in Portland and Seattle and Philadelphia this past weekend, and oh. Um, we perform in Chicago, Washington, D.C., kind of all over the place. Okay. So. It's, yeah, yeah, it's very interesting that, that a young person like you, who was born in the United States and probably did not speak the language properly, That's um, right. at an older age, not, I mean, like, you know, goes back and uh, starts learning and, 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 and mastering, you know, very, very difficult type of singing and music. But before we get into that, um, give us a little history about your musical background. Mm -hmm. So, having grown up in, in Chicago, um, I was exposed to a lot of different styles of music. Um, classical music, both of my parents were actually were into classical music. Um, jazz music, blues. In fact, my father, people often ask me, did your father introduce you to the maqam? He actually didn't. He introduced me to Louis Armstrong oh. and introduced me to, he t used to take me to, to blues clubs in Chicago when I was young. Before I've, I was, I've, I've been there. There's nice clubs in Chicago. There's some great clubs. Yes. Um, and he discovered some, a club called the Checkerboard Lounge. It wasn't even the typical touristy place. It was a place where basically only the locals would go hang out. Those are the best places. I yeah, know. and and it was in this really bad neighborhood on Martin Luther King Drive in the middle of the <laughs> south. And and he took me to this place when I was fourteen. We painted a mustache on my <laughs> so above my lips so that I could so that nobody would question me. Of course, nobody there cared about uh, yeah. age. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, so he was not n maybe unwittingly turned me into a jazz and, and blues trumpet player. I don't think he... He, he knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he thought I was going to go into music seriously. But once he saw that, okay, I'm really serious and I was, I was really starting to, to do well, then he, he really stood behind me and, and really supported. Um, but I went to school, studied uh, classical trumpet at DePaul University. Um, and I also was, was learning jazz music along the way. And living in Chicago, I got to work with rhythm and blues and rock and blues and jazz, and every, every kind. But I was sort of, jazz was really my main thing, but the classical training was really good to keep me um, focused and sort of keep my abilities on the trumpet high. Because sometimes if you just do jazz, you don't really learn how to play your instrument or have the discipline to, to practice. So. Um, and then it was pretty much after finishing that, after, after graduating, I had just started listening to some Arabic music and I had been introduced to a recording by my sister, Dina, who performs now in Safafir and has, will have performed with us. We'll uh, see what the Safafir will talk about it after. Yeah, but yeah. 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 Um, she's a violinist and uh -huh. she had actually gotten into Arabic music long before I did okay. um, in her first trip to Baghdad in 1990. So she started a band called Salam, and they'd been playing. I was always interested, but thought, well, I play the trumpet, you know. There's no, well, you no yeah, place for trumpet in Arabic yeah. music. What am I going to do, learn a new instrument? Right. You know? And I, 
I wasn't about to learn an instrument, but I discovered Samuel Babli, who was a great Egyptian trumpet player. Dina played me a recording, and, and it was a two-minute taqseem, solo improvisation, and I listened to the whole thing. I said, this beautiful, what, what instrument is that? And she started laughing. I said, is it a flute? <laughs> I kept guessing, <laughs> flute, violin. Is it a voice? I didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. And she told me it's a trumpet. And then I uh -huh. had to go back cool. and listen to the whole thing again to, to believe her, you know, to really, you know. So was that like trumpet uh, playing Arabic music? Sharqi, or? yeah. Pure so Sharqi. Uh, quarter tone. Quarter tone, every ornament, every, it was purely Arabic trumpet. In fact, he wasn't even influenced by Western trumpet. By the way, for those people who don't know what is quarter tone, what is quarter tone? Quarter tone um, is, is a kind of, it, it's a general term, and it's not quite accurate, um, but it's a quick way to describe the, the pitches that land somewhere in between the white and the black keys on the piano. So if you've ever had, anyone who's had yeah. Western training or has ever played on a piano, you sort of know there's, you know, there's a note here, it's called C, and then there's a black note above it, it's called C sharp, then there's D, and then there's D sharp, then there's E. Okay. You go up. By step, half, quarter, by half step. Half a step. Half step, half step, half right. step, half step, half step, half step. And all Western music is built on that construction. Um, and all these intervals are completely uh, the same distance, so the same ratio of frequency from one to the next. Gets, and um, most Eastern musics do not follow that, what's called equal temperament. Okay. They follow a more movable temperament which is as specific, but is not fixed to the, this grid system. So it's more flexible? It's more flexible. And what's interesting uh, about it is you can express a lot of emotion by singing or playing a note slightly sharper or flatter than people expect. And it's something that people, like Umm Kalthum famously plays with that. A lot of maqam singers famous, are, are, you know, use that as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's interesting is you can tell I immediately know a recording is from Egypt or from Syria or from Baghdad or from oh. by how they tune their their notes. I see. The the like the E in Egypt is very very low. Their, their E half flat is very very low pitch. Um, and I'm talking about twenty cents, which means yeah. you know it's it's almost imperceptible difference until you train your ear for it. So, so let's go back now. You you got introduced to the trumpet. You said, oh wow, it's really good. Then yeah. what happened? I'm, I went to a workshop that Edward Said and Daniel Barenboim led in Germany in uh, 1999, right after graduating school, and I met a bunch of Arabic musicians there. It was a mixed group. Um, and these guys said, hey, you should come to Egypt sometime, and, and you know, we have a place for you, we've got this, 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 and it's cheap, you should come. So I bought a ticket from Germany and went to Egypt. And I'm, that's when I met Samuel Babli, and I took a couple of lessons with him. Not real lessons, more like hang out. What does he do, Samuel Babli? He's a trumpet player. He's okay. the guy I mentioned. He's the guy you, you heard him, he's but then you met he's him. He's from Al Fayyum. Well, he's a Falahi. He's a he's a pez, like a farmer basically, yeah, yeah. from very very simple roots. Not even from the city. He took me one time, drove me an hour to his home, fed me, you know, did the usual. Really took you? care of me. Um, and sang for me all night and played trumpet for wow. me, you know. And uh, and my and I could only stay a couple of weeks. So I'm, I met him on three different, uh, th yeah, three different occasions. Um, and I was going to come back and study with him some more. I came back to the U.S. and six months later he passed away. Oh, yeah, he had gotten into a car accident. So uh, which Allah so, Allah 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 really so so so. Did you study trumpet or I mean you you know you went for jazz in yeah. school? Yeah. But did you study trumpet? Uh, Arabic trumpet? No, no. I mean, I was yeah. Jazz, oh, oh, yeah. Jazz and classical yeah, trumpet in yeah. school. Yeah. So, yeah. so now you got introduced to the Arabic trumpet. Yeah. Then what? Then it was a matter of really figuring out how to how to make the Arabic trumpet work, how to make trumpet sound good in Arabic music. Because he did it um, really well with Egyptian music, but I was, oh. you know, kind of trying to check out a lot of different styles. But I really wanted to try it, listen to understand al maqam al Iraqi. Because it has a very unique sound to it that's not quite the same as. What is al maqam al Iraqi? Al maqam al Iraqi is the. It's it's such a hard term to, 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 to <laughs> define because one on one hand it's 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 the classical singing for for all of Iraq uh, Iraqi music. It's sort of the basis for everything that every melody that you hear from 
from original Iraqi music, not the pop necessarily, yeah. but the, the older stuff. It comes from this kind of lore, this whole collection of melodies that sort of is like a big pool from which you can draw on to create compositions or, or improvisations. And they vary. If you're in Mosul, you have a f very specific set of possibilities yes. that's different from Kirkuk, that's different from Baghdad, different from Al Basra. But it's, it's almost like Al Iraq is on top of a sea of melodies. Of, you know, we think of oil, but actually there's <laughs> and more interesting melodies. For you, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> and depending on where you are, yeah. those, those different things come out and of course there's influence you know from from Persia from Iran of course. from Turkey yeah. from the Gulf and you have all this different you know and then of course you know we know what a, a, a wonderful melting pot uh, cities like Baghdad are and and the music is a reflection of that um, every piece of you know maqam they get turned into compositions you know it starts with one particular piece. We'll go into more detail on that later, but but it's all based on this sort of melodic structures. Yeah. So so um, now you've got the trumpet. You've tried to figure out how to play it. You know, with the Iraqi music, were you successful in, in, in doing that? I was for a while. I mean, I showed up to. So I I guess to just c continue along the chronology. 1999. I met Sammy Babli. Then I moved to New York shortly after that. And I was playing jazz, but I was really interested in jazz that kind of took from non-Western sources, whether it's Latin music or whether it was Indian music, because there's a lot of people that have been doing that for some time, or African music. I was just, that sound was appealing to me, and I didn't quite know why. I was sort of later found, found th what it is, but, um, and some of it has to do with the quarter tones, and a lot of it has to do with the rhythms as well. There's a lot of flexibility. So I was like, okay, so these guys are doing Indian fusion jazz, and these guys are doing African jazz fusion, Cuban. There's no one doing, not really, mm. m there's a little bit of Arabic, but I mm. wasn't crazy about most of it, because usually it was Arabic musicians that didn't know jazz, or jazz musicians that didn't know Arabic. And so depending on where the person's orientation was, their, their music could be very, heard as very superficial. So I decided, okay, I want, I want to not just go Arabic, learn the Arabic music. I want to learn Iraqi music, I really. I so um, it was around that time, 2001, I won this uh, competition, a jazz trumpet competition. Tell us about it. How did you win it? What, what was it? How did I win? Yeah, what well, was the competition? Well, I slipped each judge 50 bucks, and he... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know. Uh, no, I, I, I practiced a lot. I, I would spend years, and I mean, when I moved to New York, I just practiced like eight hours a day. I was, you know, that was like my nine-to-five job was to practice um, trumpet. And because I was trying to get on, get up to speed with everybody, because there's so many great musicians in New York. It's the capital. Were you making your of living jazz. from playing jazz and trumpet, or I was actually playing jazz and classical music when I moved to New York. I had saved up some money before I, I moved there, and then by by 2001, when I won that competition, I was I was at the point I was supporting myself. So was it substantial? I mean, or. Uh I, it, it wasn't so exciting because I was doing a lot of gigs just because they paid money, not necessarily, they want to say high profile, it could have been, you know, playing for a wedding or playing for, playing in a church or playing in an opera company or, you know, some of it was interesting and, um, and it helped that I had classical training because yeah, yeah. that was. So now you won it, and what did you do? So, so yeah, so that was is the, called the Carmine Caruso International Jazz Trumpet Competition. It's every two years and it's a $10,000 award and so I basically decided I, I'm going to win this competition because <laughs> I want to take the, I, I had the whole, I planned the whole trip before I, oh, before so you I to go where? To go to, to, to Baghdad. To Baghdad yeah. and learn the maqam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a, it was in the context of a, a longer trip. I actually went to Morocco, Tunisia, and then to Baghdad and then to Cairo. Yeah. And I thought I'd spend like a few. That, that's really good. You know what? When you make a goal, yeah, you know, you make sure that you can achieve that goal, and you, you had a goal to go to Baghdad, and you made sure that you win the competition. Yeah, so you could go fantastic. Yeah, it was. The, I mean, it was the only way I could go because I didn't have that money right. sitting around. Um, but but yeah, exactly. Sometimes things work that way, where you yeah. you really set your mind on something, right. and everything yeah. else falls into place right. to make it work. So did you go to Baghdad? I went to Baghdad, yeah. And then what happened in Baghdad? I was going to stay for three weeks, and uh -huh. three weeks turned into three months. <laughs> I couldn't uh, leave. Every week my relatives would tease me, you're not going to leave, I know you're not going to leave. Oh, no, tomorrow I'm leaving. With you. So uh, what I, were you doing I, I in Baghdad? I mean, visiting your relatives? Well, or? the first, I mean, that was part of it, was it took me 
two weeks before I could even get a, a, a oh, lesson. Because I was yeah. uh, lunch here and dinner here, and you'd be so full, you can't really move for a few <laughs> hours after each meal. And, you know, I, I, I was, but it was, it was a real incredible homecoming experience. I'd been there once in 93 when I was 15 yeah. years old. But going as an adult and, you know, I w the first time I was with my father, this time I'd chosen oh, to go. And, and yeah. I was really determined to learn to speak fluent Arabic, Iraqi. Uh, Iraqi dialect, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and I just was, I, mean, I was like a sponge, you know, I was trying to soak up every experience. So every your first goal was to learn the language, and then the second thing was to learn what? I suppose the first goal was probably to learn the music and the then music. the language. Okay. Yeah. I mean, music I, was really, you know, so what was driving. So by music you mean playing instruments or singing and... Well, so I thought, okay, I'll learn it on the trumpet. I'm going to introduce the trumpet to al maqam Iraqi. Okay. And that... Wow. St yeah. It's, a, it's very ambitious, and it's especially ambitious coming from the outside and, and not really knowing the music from the inside. So after... It was basically those three months I was doing that. I, I made some pretty good progress. I got to perform at Mat'haf al-Baghdadi, the, the Baghdadi Museum. Museum. You know, the, there's a gahwa, there's yes, a coffee yes, shop, yes. where they do maqam every right, Friday night. Yeah. So one, one day I went to Hussein al-Azami's house. He's a very well-known maqam okay. reciter. He had, had every Thursday night, he had these jalsat, this, you know, ga'dat, artistic so had, gatherings. Yes. And one day, this guy, I played Maqam Rast, I'd just learned With it. With the trumpet. On the trumpet. Uh -huh. And this guy was, gave a long speech afterward. <laughs> about? About, you, into, you came from America, and you have everything in America, and you came here to learn Maqam, we're so touched, and this. And then somebody else said, he should play at the Mat'haf, at the museum, next Friday. Wow. So I said, wow. <laughs> Mat'haf is not a joke. Yeah. Um, so the next week, yeah, I practiced and practiced, practiced. Showed up the next week, they they brought a singer to sing the maqam, and I basically functioned as a, a company instrument, like a yeah. nai. Yeah, unfortunately, you don't have the trumpet with you because I've heard you at Montalvi Art Center, oh, right, and right. you're playing it, but it's yeah. amazing. And so yeah, and so I played that, that at the Metav, and it was uh -huh. amazing experience because I. I you know, the guy sang the, the beginning of the maqam, and then all of a sudden this trumpet, and everybody, people were talking, they suddenly stopped, <laughs> like, what is that? And, and they gave a big round of applause afterward, like, it wow. really, um, then they invited me to, because the next week was Saddam's birthday, and they invited me to perform there, but I... You didn't I, go? Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> it wasn't a good idea. You so probably won't be here now. You probably you wouldn't be here now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but it was, it was a, a, you know, a pleasure to be... To, to perform then, and I got to play a few more times. Yeah. Listen, we've got ten minutes left, so minutes I'm left. dying to hear some of this. What is this? Tell us. What is this instrument? This. Yeah. So, so at a certain point, I realized, okay, the trumpet is great, but it's not going to get me all the way inside the music. Okay. I need to learn a native instrument. Okay. And I'd heard singing all my life. I'd heard all the Ar Arabic instruments, but the santur always had a special sound to me. And this is a santur. 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 Uh, yeah. and how, I mean, is it like a specific Iraqi, you don't you know, like an Iraqi instrument? Yeah. It was it created and developed in Iraq? Mm -hmm. when about a thousand BC. A thousand, three thousand years ago. Yeah, about three thousand years ago. Interesting. And it was played in Nebuchad Nasr's orchestra. There's drawings of yes, yes. his musicians. And yeah, that's, I saw that on your website. Mm -hmm. Was it right? Or there was an interview with you. There was an interview with you. I might have you. mentioned it, yeah. 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 Okay, let, let's hear something. Yeah. So that's what, what, what we're going to hear. Well, I'll play, um, well, since I mentioned Maqam Rast, that's sort of the first piece I learned on the trumpet. It's still a favorite of, of my okay. pieces. So, so I'll hear. do... Um,
beautiful.
love. Fantastic. Very nice. Thank you. It's really nice. Thank you. Thank now, now we don't have time, you know. And I was going to ask you to sing, but I tell you what. Remember you told me over the phone that you wanted to do a workshop? Yeah. So I want to invite you to come next week. We'll do a workshop. I want, I want you to hear. We want to hear you sing the Bakam now. Okay. This is so beautiful. Now we've got about a couple of minutes. Um, so tell us, uh, uh, you learned the, the music there. You learned the Santur there. Who taught you the singing? I'm just have about yeah. a minute to answer that. Yeah, I, I started on the Santur there uh, toward the end of my time. I, I, I stayed another, I went back to the U.S. and then came back to Iraq for another three months. But um, then it was getting close to the beginning of the war, actually. This was the beginning of 2003 is when yeah. I left Baghdad. Um, and, and I basically went to Europe after that. That's when I met um, Hamr Saadi, uh -huh. who was probably my most important teacher. He's, yeah. He spent six months, I spent six months with him, uh, three or four times a week learning to I sing. I'll tell you what, we're going to hear more about this next week. Yeah, okay. okay. So I want to hear more about the, how you learned this. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, um, I'm actually, I'm looking forward to, to hear you in concert next Saturday. And uh, hopefully sometime we're going to show this concert here, you know, record it and we'll show it on Great. TV here. Great, So um, this is really very amazing, very nice. I really appreciate it and I hope... Who's going to come with you, your sister? And yeah, my sister Dina plays the Josa and the violin, and then um, her husband, Tim, Tim Moore. He plays? T Temur. Yeah, Temur. He plays the percussion. The percussion. Yeah, so we'll be a trio. So they're all here, right? They're all here, yeah. And then you're going to have your trumpet also? I have my trumpet on Saturday. Okay, so, so guess what? We're going to have to record that show. Yeah. And... Uh, Probably when you know we dedicate part of it to show it on Arab TV. Mm -hmm. So I thank you this time for coming here. Thank you so much. I appreciate much. it so pleasure. much. Thank and you. again, you know, we'll see you next week. So hey, please, you know, stay and watch us next week. We're gonna have a workshop about the Iraqi maqam, and we're gonna hear actually hear Amir sing here. Thank you very much, and uh, you know. It's just, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, we, I, I thought I was like Nebuchadnezzar Nasser 3,000 years ago sitting and listening <laughs> yeah, to you, listening. honest to God. But I wish you brought the trumpet.